In this video, I'll go over the comprehensive metabolic panel that I offer most frequently, along with my functional health analysis. Hopefully you've taken the time to watch the video I made, which explains more about my functional health analysis of blood work, versus review of blood work solely to identify pathology and disease. The comprehensive metabolic panel requires five to seven vials of blood, and as I mentioned in the lab testing overview video, it'll give more insight into the health and the function of different systems of your body. This panel consists of over 65 biomarkers that help identify whether or not there are patterns related to anemia, blood sugar abnormalities, cholesterol metabolism issues, immune stress, thyroid dysfunction and autoimmunity, inflammation, heart attack and stroke risk, and will provide more information for the assessment of stomach, liver, gallbladder, and kidney function. It also includes a urinalysis, which provides further information to aid in the assessment of the blood chemistry results. On your screen, you'll see a list of the tests included. You can also view or download the list from my website. In addition to reviewing your lab work for out-of-range markers, it will also be reviewed using our functional health analysis, which is included in the cost of this panel. To help you better understand the difference in our comprehensive metabolic panel and how we use the information from the results, I'll share a case example with you. This lab information was from a patient in my office who had a 22-year history of thyroid disease. She had been through this system with medication adjustments and being told to eat less and exercise more only to have her symptoms increase and her life slip out of control. For this example, I'm going to highlight the lab information that was missed and played a key role in her recovery only, so you won't see all of the biomarkers that I mentioned in the list earlier. This panel allowed us to see several items that had not been previously ordered by her doctors in the last 22 years. As you can see, there are two lab test dates about three months apart. The older labs are on the bottom and the newer labs are on the top. You'll want to look at the number on the bottom first for each result and compare it to the top number for that same marker. Additionally, the results are color coordinated like a traffic signal. Green means go on to the next item. Yellow means take caution, there may be dysfunction here. And red means stop. This is outside of the normal lab range and could indicate a more serious problem. Now that you're up to speed on this, here's what was missed and once remedied, allowed this patient to recover her health and get her life back. Just a quick disclaimer first. Remember that I'm speaking specifically about this patient and the interpretation is unique to her presenting symptoms, personal health history, and examination. So please understand that although these markers have specific meaning for this patient, one abnormal lab does not identify a problem, just a potential for it to be a problem. You'll see that her protein level in April was at the upper limit of the functional range, which although it's highlighted in green, could have been yellow in this case when we consider it with the globulin elevation. This patient had a long history of acid reflux, which is very common with autoimmune thyroid disease. The changes in her protein levels identified both immune dysregulation and stomach acid dysregulation. As her immune system was able to recover, her globulin levels dropped, which lowered her total proteins, and although they're highlighted yellow, were not indicative of a long-term problem. The second thing you'll see on this page is a functionally low triglyceride level, which was 55 and improved to 71. Most conventional doctors don't look at low normal triglycerides with any concern. However, when combined with other markers, it can be indicative of oxidative stress and or autoimmunity. This allowed us to see a mechanism for support with supplements designed to help rebalance the immune function. The other marker to notice on this page is the cholesterol. We can see that although it is highlighted in green, the number is dropped close to the lower limit of the functional range. This is likely for two reasons. First, my recommended dietary and lifestyle changes will naturally lower your cholesterol. Second, cholesterol levels are elevated in hypothyroidism, and when it's autoimmune hypothyroidism, decreasing inflammation will normalize thyroid signaling, and the cholesterol will lower as well. Remember that cholesterol is of vital importance in production of many hormones, and low levels can negatively impact your hormone health. In this case, the low cholesterol was masked by a thyroid problem. After addressing the thyroid problem, her labs allowed us to see the mechanisms for her menopausal symptoms that still persisted. We were able to address this by increasing essential fatty acids in her diet and further managing inflammation. Continuing with the lipid or fat markers, we can see that her LDL dropped to a normal range, but her HDL lowered and was highlighted in yellow. False elevations in HDL can be indicative of autoimmune disease when combined with other markers. As her inflammation decreased, her HDL readjusted just like we saw with her cholesterol. The change in HDL gave us the indication that her body was ready to introduce more consistent exercise into her daily routine to help her restore balance. We can also see her TSH level move from outside of the lab range, or red, 
to a normal level. This matched her change in energy and decrease in thyroid symptoms. As her symptoms changed, it was not necessary to repeat the thyroid hormone markers for T3 and T4. This is primarily because they'll shift with changes in medication and thyroid function. Fibrinogen, which you see highlighted in red, indicates the stickiness of your blood. And with elevations like this combined with elevated CRP and homocysteine, like you see below, we know that this patient's heart attack and stroke risk are significantly increased and that cardiovascular damage was likely taking place. Many patients are taught to observe cholesterol levels for cardiovascular risk. However, the markers I just mentioned are a far superior way of evaluating health risks. Additionally, homocysteine will also give us insight into your methylation status, which I'll go into more detail about on the nutrigenomic evaluation video. Lastly, as with almost all autoimmune cases, her vitamin D level was depressed, which you can see highlighted in red. Vitamin D has many roles in our body. It serves a hormonal role in regulating the ability of our intestines to maintain immune health by supporting the barrier which allows for the absorption of food. This barrier can be breached when vitamin D levels are low, resulting in leaky gut syndrome, the development of food sensitivities, and it can allow larger proteins to be moved into the blood where they can create an immune response and via molecular mimicry result in autoimmune reactivity to different parts of your body. Proper levels of vitamin D are vital to recovering your health. Is ordering lab tests the right choice for you? It's important to consider all of the information that can be obtained when your labs are evaluated with a focus on health versus disease. Whatever the case may be for you, the willingness to make dietary and lifestyle changes along with a comprehensive metabolic panel and or a functional health analysis of your current lab work may be just what you need to identify the problematic areas in your body. Remember that you're not a victim of poor health. Your body is asking you to be more aware of the things in your environment, diet, and lifestyle that are taking away your health. Thorough lab work with a different type of analysis may help you increase that awareness and give you a chance to get your health back. I'm Dr. Richard L. Robles, and I look forward to helping you find your path to health.